What's up guys, in this episode of the Adventure Trailer Build, we're going to install all the electrics on the trailer. That includes solar power, switches, fuses, the whole shebang. So, with that said, let's get started. So this is going to be our electronics panel. Um, so up here we have our MPPT solar charge controller. Um, this way these two go up to the solar panel. That way I can just run them right up this panel. This will go to the battery. Otherwise the load will run to here. This is our Blue Sea Systems uh, fuse box. Basically you run positive up to here, ground to here. These are all negative. These are your various positive fuses. Um, we're going to be using six of them. I'm probably just going to use the six on this side since it's just simply more convenient because it's going this way. Um, but that's just our fuse panel and our uh, negative bus, basically. This is our little 1,000 uh, standard 2,000 watt peak uh, inverter. Um, this, I think I'm going to jump just straight to the battery um, because this has its own on and off switch on it and I don't anticipate using this very much. Um, we're going to use 12 volt uh, to charge phones and, and electronics and stuff. This is just in case I need to run something that is a standard plug. I want to have it on board. Um, it's, you know, it's 40 or 50 bucks. It's, it's well worth the investment. Um, but we're going to have to figure out a way to mount it because it, I just realized right now it didn't come with any sort of mounting hardware. It just kind of exists on its own. So we'll probably end up taking this apart and just, just building a little mount for it or whatever. Um, so that's not too big of a deal. And then down here I have this. This is, um, I took this off of something. This is a Perco battery switch. These things are super solid. Um, basically this will allow me to disconnect the battery from the entire uh, DC system. Uh, so basically the batteries will run, the, the solar panel are, are always connected to the batteries. But this will basically act as a uh, on and off switch for this. So we're going to be able to hook both batteries to here. And then the output of this will head up here to this positive terminal on the fuse block. Um, that way, uh, you know, if we're having any sort of issues or I'm parked somewhere and I don't want people to be able to use any of the outdoor DC, I can just turn it off because um, it doesn't need to be doing anything. And then when we're... We're using it, you know, I can pop it to one or to all to uh, use the batteries depending on, on kind of what we're doing. This also gives me the opportunity if I need to use the batteries to jumpstart something, I can isolate them. Um, so it's nice to have one of these, basically just a big on and off switch for the batteries. This is our um, outdoor fuse panel. This is an aluminum panel. It's waterproof. These switches are waterproof. Unfortunately, they came with these stupid like crap on them, but I'm just going to put... Uh, names on them for what they're actually going to be. So we have six switches. Um, they're illuminated. This uh, will basically just be run to a, to a fuse over there. So the illumination's on one circuit and the actual power is on the other. Um, it has a standard, uh, got USB ports built into it, as well as a standard 12 volt, uh, like cigarette lighter type deal, as well as showing us a uh, voltage reading and so all of this, the backlight and stuff will be hooked through this. So we can turn this entire panel off from the inside and lock the trailer so nobody can uh, screw with any of the features or turn them on and leave the lights on or whatever. Basically, everything will be controlled inside and locked inside. Um, back here, this uh, uses actually pretty solid sized wires. I'm actually fairly impressed. Uh, I believe the blue and the yellow are for the backlighting and the red and the black are for the actual 12 volt power. And then you can see there's spade connectors here. That's your output. It runs to, um, to the device in question. Um, so we're gonna figure it out. Unfortunately, I was gonna mount these using M4 nut certs and bolts, and I don't have an M4 nut cert tool. It's on its way. It's gonna be here tomorrow. Um, but this is kind of the general layout. And then over here is where our electrical panel is going to mount. Uh, same setup that we did with the 
water on the other side um, this is just nice and centered in this back box of the trailer it's out of the way um, maybe eventually I'm gonna put a, a kitchen table here so this is still out of the way um, just so that it um, you know it's, it's nice and secure and it's just out of the way I've already said that like four times again I use a little cardboard cutout this helps me locate everything and then I just pop the uh, the mark the drill holes again i don't have the m4 tool uh today so i can't put the nut certs in but this will just be held in with four nut certs and the the butyl tape like uh like the other side was so in terms of trailer wiring basically what we have here is this um there's a grommet in here as well we're going to install a grommet right there it's run through the frame i basically just use the fish uh wire to get it through we're gonna tap into the license plate light here, run it up through here, here, and over there because accessing down here is pretty much impossible without cutting more holes than I'd want to. Uh, green is on the right and uh, yellow is on the left. And that basically just runs across inside this bumper. And now we just have to um, get these lights mount it up and uh, install the license plate light as well now before we install this i wanted to show you guys this out here um, this is our switch panel right and so what i've done is normally whenever this has the way it's wired from from when you buy it it always has power and we don't want that i so i put this switch in here this is labeled panel and what this will do is this will turn the lights onto this and it'll activate these three units up top and basically what it's doing here is power will come into this pin um, from the switch off the battery off of the fuse um, and then as you can see it jumps to all of the lights uh, the light positives on all of them and uh, hook to the output here and to, to up here basically what that means is that i don't want this voltage gauge and these um, usb and Siggy lighters to be on all the time. And I want to be able to turn these on without having them light up necessarily. Um, and the way to do that is to put the lights and basically these three functionalities on the switch over here. So the way these five pin switches work is I believe this is the output to your load, this is the input. Since we're running multiple fuses for, or running a fuse for each unique item, we'll have six individual plus 12 feeds coming in rather than the jumper arrangement. Um, the yellow and the black, the black is the ground for the panel, the yellow is the ground for the lights. I've just jumpered them together because they're just going to the negative terminal of the battery. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install this uh, into the trailer. So here's our panel riveted in. Cool. Nothing really complicated here. Now, why would you use rivets instead of riv nuts and bolts? Uh, the answer to that question is security. Um, to pop a rivet, you got to drill it out. It's not particularly difficult, but you got to have a drill. <coughs> Bolts back themselves out. They can be unscrewed quietly. You can't really drill this out without, you know, somebody noticing. Um, on the inside, you can see putty, rivet heads, all nice and clean. Um, and so that's it for our panel. So to mount our batteries, um, I didn't want to fab anything. So I got these, these were like eight or nine bucks and they're super cheap and they're very rigid reasonably. And they come with these uh, little lock on straps, basically just runs underneath and they can be secured with up to eight M5 bolts. So we're probably going to secure them with four M5 bolts. And the next question is how do I want the battery set up? The thing is initially I'm only going to run one battery. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because uh, of cost and we'll see if I need a second battery, but I do want this laid out so that I can, uh, you know, know where, where I'm going to be putting them and, and how all the wiring is going to work. The other thing we have to keep in mind is immediately below the batteries is our water tank. So we don't want to drill too far. So... We couldn't drill through this and mount because of where the uh, water tank is. On the whole, I'm still okay with my choice because the water tank being as high as possible is in the greatest like danger from getting hit by stuff. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to just tack weld these very lightly in here. 
um, and these battery mount. The only downside is it's an inch up off the floor and I have to keep both mounts even though I'm only going to be using one battery. Not really a big deal because um, I may add a second battery or I can just strap something else in here like a first aid kit or whatever. It's not a big deal. Um, but I'm going to take these off, clean them up, and then get everything fully assembled uh, and then kind of weld it in here. And again, being very careful where I weld because I don't want too much heat transfer down into the tank. So there's our battery mounts in. I basically just hit everything with a little bit of Pour 15. It's all welded in there nice and good. I don't think I'm going to have any problems with it. Um, and like I said, we're going to run one battery for now, but have the ability to run two. And since they're top mounts, um, I'm not going to have any sort of interference issues. So the next step of installing our solar panel is I built these mounts. These are just two and a uh, half inch L bracket, same stuff we used for the fridge. Uh, and basically it'll mount to the screw holes for the Renology mount. And that way you can just slide in and out left to right. Um, and that's pretty much it. I just welded them to the roof. Uh, there's not really a whole lot of uh, parachute effect from it, so it's pretty rigid on its own. So this will keep it there, and if I want to, I can take out one of these bolts and put a, um, uh, a padlock on it. Obviously, the, the, you could still remove it, uh, but you know it would be a little bit more secure if that becomes necessary. So these are the kind of factory style um, connectors for solar panels. They're really great if you want to connect something one time and never disconnect it again. Uh, but I don't. I want to be able to move stuff around. So what I've done is I bought these Anderson Power products. These are the real deal. Uh, if you search Anderson connectors or if you search um, forklift connectors, forklift style connectors, you can find these. And uh, every major power terminal on the trailer is going to be like this. They have holes pre-drilled in them so you can mount them to something if you want to. Um, and they're just a really good quality connector. And I super love these things. So in here, you can see we've got these cables all up out of the way. Um, got a nice little shrink wrap on these. These will go up here to the load. Um, and then up here on the roof we're using one of these these are specifically for solar panels on rvs um, basically they use a compression gland end feed the wire through gives it a waterproof seal so what i've done here is i've drilled a few small holes and matched them on the underside and we're going to just use these little tiny screws um, and also secure it with um, uh, construction adhesive uh, like liquid nails so that'll take up the the gap and then we'll just cinch tight and the combination of adhesion uh, and screws will keep this uh, nice and tight. So there we go. Um, you can see we have it sealed. It's screwed on from underneath. Short little pig lead. And this is our Anderson plug for our solar panel. Um, and I'm going to label this, put a little sticker on here that says solar uh, to make sure it's clear. And then we're going to add another one of these that'll be for truck power, shore power, so on. So our H2O pump wiring is in. It's that loom right there. I decided to run a positive and a negative down to it. It goes through the floor over there, comes out over here. I also took the opportunity to drop everything, insulate the tank, and install this. This is our breather line plus with the tank all sealed up, it'll show me basically once the tank is full, I'll see water in this uh, clear hoop. Um, and that'll let me know that the tank is basically full and I can turn it off. Of course, it requires removal of the inspection panel um, to fill, or not to fill, but to see the level, but it's not a too big of a deal. And then there's an extra loom of wire in there so that I can lower the tank, uh, lower this assembly without having to cut the wires. Um, I thought about putting a plug, but I just I wanted everything to be sealed, so I went ahead and soldered the connections and heat shrunk them. So that's it for the water pump. We got the second one of these mounted. It's got to glue itself in. This is for the alternator, so I can charge it off of the truck while we're going down the road. And basically what you see right here is I ran the wiring along here, down here. These are still unterminated. I'm waiting on the battery to set the final length on those cables, but they'll just bolt straight to the battery right there. So next we installed these uh, little floodlights. There's one on each corner. The two front ones are wired together. The two rears are wired together. 
I used a riv nut to basically secure it into this tube. And then we use these little grommets. Um, they're pretty tight on here and basically ran wiring inside of this tube and the front one to kind of keep all of our wiring in check. So you can see there's a grommet here, just runs inside this tube. Um, and we can, we're gonna pull some of this tight later and zip tie it. But as you can see, it just runs to the ground. These two run to the switches. Um, and I believe that takes care of, we have the panel, we have the rear lights, the front lights and H2O. Those are our four um, switched uh, lights. The next thing we gotta have to take care of is, is the rest of this. So we have everything on this side done. We still need to do the interior, the kitchen, and the 12 volts for the tent. Um, I may leave the 12 volts for the tent uh, to the next video, which will include installation of the tent and all of that kind of stuff, because I don't know where I wanna put that hole just yet. Um, but we are gonna run the interior and the kitchen lights uh, next. So kitchen lights, let me show you guys what we did here. Basically, this is an RGB strip um, and it's glued on, it runs the entire perimetry and under here, there's a grommet, another grommet, and then there's this. Uh, these little controllers are great, they cost a couple of bucks and the nice thing about this is, is at nighttime I can turn it on red, I can turn it off entirely and this thing, even when it loses power, it keeps its settings. So next time you turn it back on, it remembers the settings. I can make it glow and change colors and stuff and whatever. But the really cool thing is, you know, if I if it's early evening or I need a lot of light, I can turn it on to bright white and turn it all the way up. Um, at night, if there or if there's bugs or whatever, I can turn on a red light, um, which is going to be much less attractive to bugs and isn't going to fuck with my night vision as much. And I can also dim it down. And basically when it's not being used, it's in here. We'll see, I cleaned everything off before I glued it down. I still secured it physically in a couple of spots. We'll see how long it lasts. Worst case scenario, I'll secure it physically all the way around the perimeter. Um, we put this in a loom, the loom runs around here, just nice up out of the way. And then over there to the fuse panel because this acts as our on and off switch. And when it's not in use, we just fold up the kitchen table. Uh, like normal and you can see as we close this uh, it keeps the wire loom up out of the way because it's secured down here and secured over here um, so hopefully it won't cause any sort of issues with that so to finish out the lights we installed the little switch over here i'm missing the connector but basically we have a light strip back here this is going to light up the kitchen storage area and then back over here, the interior storage, and I put that switch right in the middle, so either front door entrances can, can easily access it. So that's pretty much it for the wiring. Um, we still have to run wires to the tent, but I can't do that until the tent's in. Um, and I think that means that this thing is ready to roll out of the garage. There's still, oh, there's still a few more battery cables to make as well, but uh, I'll do that when the battery gets in. So... We still got some cleaning to do in here, but I wanted to just kind of give you guys the layout here. Um, so solar controller, it has the input from the solar panel. It has the output to the battery. Our battery is right here. Um, and then we have the ground of the load connecting to our fuse block up here. And the positive of the load goes to input number two on our switch down here. The inverter is just tied directly to the battery and the positive from here is tied to the output of this guy. So what this means is that position one hooks this, which is our fuse plate, to the battery only. Position number two uh, allows us to run only off of solar and all will allow us to complete this kind of circuit so that on sunshiny days we can do both charging and um, running off a solar panel. Now, the reason I didn't just uh, connect this directly is because otherwise this thing will actually pull energy from the battery to power the lights and stuff, which is great in theory, but I noticed on the, on the box truck, it would actually discharge the batteries a little bit if something was left on or whatever. Uh, I wanted a full on kill switch. So if I clip this to one, you can see things started doing stuff 
And if I go up here to our light switch, I'm still getting getting used to these. But just like that, um, we can see it turned on, and apparently it's broken because it only turned on to there. This guy turns on when you want it. And if we come out here, um, here you can see the solar panel is hooked up. If we go to the panel, we can turn the panel on. This is gonna show us we've got 14.4 volts. We've got 12 volts here. We've got a USB charger here. We can turn on the rear floods for camping. We turn on the front floods for camping. And that's the water pump. Um, obviously the water pump is not gonna be able to pump any water because there's no water in there. But, um, and those two switches don't do anything. So as you can see, our electrical system is fully set up. This is a sealed AGM battery I got off eBay. It was about 160 bucks. It's a 100 amp hour battery. It should be pretty beastly. I've got it on the charger here because it just got delivered today. So I want to make sure it starts life with a full charge, especially while this is in the garage with no solar. All right, so I just want to give kind of a final walkthrough. Everything is where it needs to be. Uh, we got our fridge in, all of our lights in. I'm waiting on one last piece, but we already tested everything. It works. I accidentally broke something stupid. So again, we have our main battery switch here. This turns on battery, um, and this turns on solar and battery. So it'll create a load. Um, and then this is if I want to run off solar only, I believe. So... Here we have our AC inverter. It's hooked directly to the battery. It's got its own on and off uh, for power. This set of cables here runs up to the alternator connection. This set runs up to our solar panel. This is our solar panel controller. This is our adventure trailer um, fuse panel. You can see everything's loaded. The only thing missing from here is the rooftop tent power. There's our switch. Back there, our fridge is wired directly to the battery. It has its own fuse. Um, and basically, let me show you guys how the uh, fridge is wired up. Basically, right here, you can see this is the power cord. It runs along there. As we pull out the fridge, you can see the wire trails along. It basically just lives under there. It's not in the way of anything. The fridge still slides in and out. Unfortunately, when it's off, it still has a LED that displays it's off, but if I need it off, I can just do that. And now the fridge is unplugged. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. I wanna thank you for watching. Um, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Um, there should be a few more videos for this adventure trailer in the playlist uh, coming soon. We're going to take it to Burning Flipside, which is a local uh, kind of festival here in uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, I'm going to take it down to the coast. We're going to go out to some off-road parks. We're going to do all kinds of fun stuff with the trailer. Um, there will also be a video on camping gear once the tent and awnings arrive and kind of are installed and everything is done with that. That will probably be the next video that you see in the playlist. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Peace. Yeah.